What's up guys? My name is Houston Crossa and welcome to the channel Royalty Exotic Cars. For those of you that don't know me, I founded a car rental company here in Las Vegas, Nevada and on my spare time I like to build pretty cool projects. Today I want to take you behind the scenes of one of my latest small projects that I've been doing. It's a Lotus Exige. So if you can tell or anybody's ever seen what a Lotus Exige looks like, obviously not a custom wide body, you know, beautiful prepped up race car in the process of being built. Just thought I would show you guys where it's coming from, where it's starting from, completely from scratch. Now this car, I wish I would have shown you guys about three months ago. It was a regular beautiful Lotus that, uh... wait one second, we're good now. It was a regular beautiful Lotus that I started with completely stock, 2007, 8,500 mile Exige. And uh, I tore it apart to make it better custom suspension, custom everything, custom wide body to fit a Honda K20 motor in here. Now it's gonna be a single turbo. It's gonna do probably between five and 700 horsepower, depending on where the, the comfort level lies with the tires that I can get. So I'm pretty stoked. This is step one of prep work to get it painted. I've got a really cool color picked out for it. So I'll be back with some more updates soon. Check it out. All right, so step basically like one and a half at the body shop. You saw last week how we were starting to prep for the wide body kit. Now there's a really cool feature, uh, actually product out there that's made for the Lotus Exige. It's called a clam hinge. Now it's not necessarily used on the Exige because the Exige has scoops and like uh, the rear panel and other things you gotta take apart to kind of use it. But I'm modifying my Exige to utilize the clam hinge. So you can kind of see if you turn the camera that way, Mario, basically with these R's, let me, let me walk in front of you. It's, these are like brackets that kind of put it open so that I can let this, and there's gonna be another part right here that kind of hangs and, and puts it together so we don't have to hold it. But normally when you remove and work on a Lotus, you have to take the entire clam off and just set it on the ground. So this way I'll be able to pull up at a car show and just pop this thing open and you just see just the magical masterpiece of what Jesse and I have built. So I'm pumped, more pumped than I ever can be because the mill spec, the exposed turbo, the way the kit's designed on it, it's just gonna be so like show status and this is gonna add just to that feature there. So I did have to cut the trunk out because the turbo is so big. Well, oh well, but- um, this, is a good, this is a good problem to have. I yeah. Think pretty good problem. Been a pretty long project that we got going on here, but uh, it's gonna be epic. One of the best kinda, Lotus you're gonna see. Kind of see. Let's go around the other side. You can kind of see my custom rear caliper setup. These calipers are basically front stock front calipers on a Lotus, so I'm using them in the rear. Uh, I've got the Penske uh, double adjustable shocks in the rear, which are very very good, and um, a custom e-brake setup, which is not normally on a, we have aluminum uprights, so they're basically the lightest possible suspension. The only thing I didn't have remade was the A-arms. I've got the ball joints done, we've got all the other pieces done. So, suspension uh, setup is pretty sick on this. Next step is gonna be to clean everything up, prep it for paint, and paint it. So we'll be back for the paint, see you guys. I know I said I was gonna be back in a couple days, but Jesse and I were talking and I think it's smart right now if we check the clearance on the engine with a custom manifold that I had made with my top mount turbo. So Jesse is grabbing the uh, turbo now, you can kind of see, but we're a little worried that the hatch is gonna be rubbing on the top of this. So um, we're gonna set the motor in real quick. It's only gonna take us about 25, 30 minutes. Uh, obviously because the car's all the way taken apart and we're gonna mount the turbo on and we're gonna check all the clearances before we go through the final preparation stages for the body work. So uh, enjoy us putting the motor in in about 30 minutes. Okay. 
So as you can see, the reason why we wanted to do this was because this turbo sits in a very odd place. Most K20 builds are naturally aspirated for Lotuses because the space or the turbo goes down there and then the, the kit comes out and around the bottom because of the trunk and the way the Exige hatch is designed. So Jesse and I are going to put this body panel back on and just cross our fingers that it doesn't hit the top. Now, seeing it from this angle and how low the motor went when we put it in there reminded me that we probably actually do have the space. We're just kind of being a little bit cautious, but you can see how awesome this turbo looks. Check this out right here before you forget. Oh. If you notice, the turbo manifold is custom made. It's not done yet, it's getting there, but most Ram style uh, headers are always opposite. This portion would be on top, but we had this custom so we can have a nice big turbo sitting on top here. So it took us a while to figure this out to get it to work and fit with the body. So appreciate that work right there. All right, so we do actually have clearance issues. The, the lid that goes here hits the top of the turbo, but that's going to be an easy fix because I'm just going to shave this piece right here out of the inside and that'll solve that. The way that I designed the exhaust to exit from the car is come down here and check this out. So this is the hot side of the turbo where the exhaust comes out. The exhaust was gonna come out like in a U into a muffler that was gonna sit right here and the muffler was center exiting this way. But um, as I showed you guys about, I don't know, 20 minutes ago, the way that the clam opens up, well, with my exhaust in that section, not going to happen. So I'm going to think of something creative to solve this problem right now. Worst case scenario, I could technically bring the exhaust down in this area here, put the muffler here, and then have like dual exiting tips that way. Um, that's my, my worst case. Not the worst worst case, but I mean, I just, I really wanted to go out of this area here. I really like that look, and um, I'm going to try to make that happen. So I'll update you guys when I figure it out. All right guys, we're back at the body shop. We're gonna give you a quick update on where we are with the Lotus project. So on the way in, you can see Maseratis, we got a Ferrari over there. Actually, it's one of my competitor's cars. We should go kick it, you know what I mean? Just kidding, he's cool. So, when we think about building custom cars, everything's kind of like bespoke, right? Now, there's, there's building a car where, where I go and I order a bunch of parts from a bunch of different manufacturers that already make parts for a Lotus and, and kind of make my car custom-ish. Right? That's like the typical way people build cars. They get the supercharger kit already made for it. They get the wide scoops already made for it. You know, they, they can do all of those things, which is cool building a car. Well, I didn't take that route. As you guys seen, we're building a really custom one-off wide body. Now, you've seen the start of it. I'm gonna show you a little bit of the little tricks that I've done to make the car not only perform better, but very, very unique. So check this out. We've already started to mold this into one piece. In a normal Lotus, obviously the hatch would come up here and this is how you're going to be able to view the engine and work on the car. I went a little bit further, all right? So when you remove a Lotus clam, you need to remove the roof, you need to remove the side scoops, you need to take off bolts over here, inside here, the fender liners, and then the clam will come off. There's a couple of little bolts on the back too. That's a lot of work. And I really want to display the car like in a very grandiose fashion. So when it's at a car show or we're at anywhere, I want it to be like a Koenigsegg or you know a, a Ford GT where the whole thing rips up and you can see the entire engine bay. So you kind of saw a little start of the, um, the, the clam design that we started to do. Now it's coming to fruition. So the scoops, 
Yeah, I'll show you in a second, Jesse. I'm gonna show them the scoops. The scoops now are gonna be stationary, right? So we're building brackets here that come in and boom, they're gonna just sit right here and they're not gonna move. That's gonna be a really cool thing. So that's step one, okay? Step two, we would have to take the roof off. Well, I decided to custom the inner channel for the water. Obviously, we're seeing this, you know, super, super early, but there's a custom channel now here and they have these arrow catches. There's now no longer screws here. There's no longer screws there. And we no longer have to remove the roof because we have these super sick arrow catches. Now, I'm gonna show you how these work, all right? So I just pull this up like this and rip it open. And you can see there's like a pin right in here. I'll just pull it out. There's a pin right in here that these lock into and unlock. So we have those all throughout this area. And once it's all open, all the arrow catches are up. Yes, go ahead. The entire back just comes right off. And I think actually it'll just sit. So yeah, that's so, all hooked up yet. But yeah, so nothing in the back is completely designed yet. So you can see this is exactly how a Ford GT or a Koenigsegg opens. Obviously, they just have a little unbutton unlock thing and it just pops up. So this is the design that I've been going with. Now, in the back, I want you to see we've got aluminum plating to hold the structure there. That's all going to get molded really, really nice. And on this side, you have a hole. I'm going to try to show you this from the other side. Wait here, Mario. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see me. But right here is the exhaust exit. So I cut this area out here. This pipe is gonna bend down and come. It's really hard to show you. It's gonna come down out here and we're gonna have a center exit exhaust down there. Originally I wanted the exhaust to go out that way, but this design wasn't really gonna work with it. So Jesse, go ahead and put it down. You're gonna see the exposed turbo. Come and check this out on this side. When you see that exhaust come straight down through here and come out over here, it's gonna lay down with the diffuser. This thing is gonna run straight pipe. It's gonna spit flames probably two, three feet out the back. It's gonna sound incredible. Exhaust straight pipe with a turbo, it, it's just, I mean, Jesse can attest with his, uh, his Supra, they sound nasty. It's, his, his has a, a Four yeah, straight four pipe. inch straight pipe. I mean, look, that thing just goes pop, 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 and it just blows. I mean, it's just amazing. So you guys can see where I'm headed with the design. We're a couple of days away from paint. Now I've said that twice already, but I really mean it this time because a lot of the engineering in this had to be done. And so I've been coming to the body shop on a daily basis to kind of work all these things around. Um, I'm pretty pumped, all right? If you guys look over here, got the front disassembled, sides disassembled, everything's molded here. All those pieces are in the paint booth. So on the next update, we're gonna come back, right? And we're gonna show you the painted pieces with the color I chose. So look out for that. See you guys soon.